Hello everybody, my name is Josh Atwell. I'm a senior technology advocate for Splunk, which it means I'm here to talk to you about DevOps. And most importantly, how to utilize or look at Splunk as a platform to help accelerate DevOps adoption. Uh, one of the things that I find consistently when talking to people about DevOps and how they're trying to adopt DevOps is that organizations tend to fa fall into very consistent adoption gates that they get stalled in and, and need to move forward through. I'd like to obligatorily say that don't buy stock based on anything I say. In fact, don't take a lot of things that I say too far. Let's start with DevOps adoption. As you saw when I started out, I had people raise their hands who were doing the DevOps, who were engaged in DevOps, trying to accelerate the ability for a development organization to get features to customers and to do it without killing the operations team. That's a win-win for everybody involved. DevOps exists primarily because of us. Because as consumers, our expectation is that we can do everything that we need with the vendors we work with on here. In fact, many of you probably found this session on here. And we're reminded about the session through here. Others just saw me standing up here and thought, man, that guy's good looking. I'm going to go listen to what he has to say. So as a result, there's new expectations. There's new technologies in our environments. There's new devices and just new ways that customers are wanting to engage with us, right, and our companies and the work that we're doing. And it's difficult to understand how many people are actually adopting DevOps, what their level of maturity is, but I find that automation adoption is a key indicator uh, to uh, how much adoption is actually happening with DevOps and accelerating development, because without automation, it is near impossible to be successful in accelerating development pipeline. And when we look across the board, people are either greatly increasing the amount of adopt, uh, adoption of automation, say that five times fast, or they have intentions to. They recognize gaps and they, they want to make that investment. And they're also seeing, we're seeing that they are sitting in various stages, right? But very few are currently saying that they are not actively adopting automation strategies. Right? Whether it's automating infrastructure, environment deployments, automating uh, response to incidents, automating you know, the code pipeline. And those three key evolution points that I identified at the beginning start with platform stability and transparency. What's happening in the environment that the code is being developed on and being deployed to? Right now, it's kind of a black hole and it has been for a long time. Thanks virtualization. Right? We used to know exactly the application, the firmware, and the system that was running. Now we have abstractions. Next is around process maturity and how you collaborate between teams. Right? Being able to identify what the value stream is and how you accelerate that and then work with other people to accelerate that. And then it's value stream optimization. Once you've figured out how to work together, Let's figure out where our bottlenecks are, where our constraints are, and let's solve for them so that we can accelerate our deployment of new features and capabilities. So let's talk about phase one. The important bit about phase one is this is where your early wins come, right? You, you're familiar with the trough of disillusionment, right? Oh, we're doing, we're doing great. Oh man, this just got hard. Well, this is where this happens. And it happens because development has gotten really fast with agile and they've developed new processes for developing the software. But the new features have become inventory because operations is not always prepared to adopt that new code and get it deployed. So new services have to be delivered from IT in order to support that faster delivery pipeline. And that also means new operating models for IT, right? So this is what's happening to every enterprise out there. And in order to get through this first gate, you have to focus on stability and visibility first. Stability means if we're going to go fast, we can do it safely. We can recover, right? This is like being on a racetrack where you have the safety provisions to keep you from you know, wrecking and destroying yourself. The car can break, that's fine, but you wanna be safe. And then enabling the tool chain as well. That's ensuring that the tool chain can work together, you have understanding of what's happening, because if Bitbucket isn't available, things go bad, 
If Jenkins isn't available, things go double bad. Like these are key requirements now in the tool chain. And speed without stability is perilous, right? It is dangerous because you're gonna inject more and more problems. So Splunk specifically helps by giving better visibility into the platforms that people are using. Most applications run on virtualization or containers. Containers, of course, increasing in adoption, right? So this is your infrastructure and orchestration layer, and it is the foundation for development and application developers, okay? This is where they're working. This is where they provision their working environments, and this is where they deploy their code. Yes, cloud is an option as well. It is also one of the platforms. And what, happened, what we're also seeing is that these applications are being modernized, and they're being transitioned from virtual machine to container which means that not only is development making decisions on where these are going to go, but they're also adding some additional pain points to operation and additional need for visibility and awareness. Having reliance on infrastructure for stability has been standard up until now. Now more applications have this resiliency, right? Splunk app for infrastructure is specifically built to help gain visibility of what's happening in the underlying infrastructure. And you'll note throughout the presentation, I'll have these QR codes. So if you want to get your, you be clever, get your phones out, it'll take you to the URL. You can trust it. It's nothing bad. At least it wasn't when I put the presentation together. Splunk app for infrastructure allows you to monitor your infrastructure's behavior and understand what's happening. Identify issues more quickly so that you're delivering a stable environment for the applications to run and for developers to operate and build. And it's a unified approach. You can look at both virtual machines and containers all within the same platform. We also have to deal with the new automation tool chain that is supporting the infrastructure, where if, whether it's Puppet or Ansible, whether we're deploying and we're managing our code base repository with Jira, with Git, right? These systems now are our source of record for the state of the infrastructure. We need to be able to monitor and stabilize that as well. We need to understand what's happening inside of those applications and how those applications are being utilized. IT can do that and Splunk can provide that visibility because code is easier to track than humans are. Humans disappear. Humans go on vacation. Humans get hungry. Code does not, it persists. So you need to maintain that visibility and share that visibility. And that sharing is critically important to getting through this gate. You have to empower others with knowledge. Right? Successful evolution through this phase is that trust and that sharing of information. If only there was a platform that could collect data from everything and be able to share it with anyone. Right? Splunk is a great use for that. Because if others can't see it, they can't help. They can't help you identify issues and bottlenecks and they can't help you resolve those. So your next phase is your process maturity. In process maturity, you're trying to identify the stages in your value stream, in your software development lifecycle, in your operations model that supports the fast delivery of applications and the sustainable operations of these applications. Service level monitoring has become the standard framework for how an operations organization wants to monitor environments. This is in large part because applications are now distributed and there's not always a one-to-one -one relationship to where an application resides today versus where it resided yesterday. And that application is broken up into many parts, right? So to understand overall health, we move to service level objectives. We also, as we make these transitions to these applications, understand that we can operate at degraded state sometimes. That's okay. It's better to run at 70% of capability than it is at 0% capability. So service level objectives are the key metric going forward. This also em helps empower an organization to transition to an SRE model. Because without understanding how you measure and monitor service level objectives, it is very difficult to make a transition to an SRE model where the focus of the organization is not just how to resolve an issue, but how do we further stabilize the environment and accelerate our ability to increase our chances of maintaining that service level objective. And last, uh, IT service intelligence not only helps us with the transition to service level monitoring, but it also gives us the, our, our first uh, use cases of predictive analytics. Because there's only one thing better than recovering from an outage quickly, and that's never having the outage or degraded service at all. And as you're monitoring through service levels, you're starting to learn and understand 
that the system can start being responsive and give you insights into what's happening in the environment. Not just to the operations people, but also to the NOC, to the SREs, to the developers, to understand that last code push and that deploy, it changed the way things operated. We can see that and respond to it. This now leads to the next bit in process maturity, is incident response, right? Splunk is all about turning data into doing, but without actually having a good process for doing, it still becomes a scramble to identify the right resource and get them engaged. Now, one of the interesting side effects of the transition to the cloud early on was that developers who abandoned on-premises IT operations quickly learn that you still have to do operations no matter where you deploy code. It's just different. Now there's a belief that if you build it, you have to respond to it, which is fine, okay? That is an organizational and cultural decision that you have to determine. Tools like VictorOps enable organizations to be able to develop incident response plans that you can incorporate developers when it's appropriate, incorporate the right resources at the right time, and most importantly, deliver the right data to them that they need and dramatically reduce the time to resolution for issues. Part of the way that VictorOps does this in working with Splunk is through toolset integration, right? By bringing knowledge and context to the incident response, right? Bringing it to the person that's being notified, whether they're being paged, whether they're receiving alert through Slack, right? And then giving them opportunity to automate that response, right? And being able to do that through messaging and, and tooling frameworks that allows everybody to see what that response was, who did it, when they did it, not for blame, not for ownership, awareness and understanding. That way you can track down how an incident moved forward. And now we get to the last phase. And this is easily the most difficult phase because at this point, everybody has invested a lot into tools. We've gone through the pain of changing our processes. We now have developers on call. We now have operations on call operations professionals on call with platforms they haven't been familiar with, but they're getting comfortable with, new tool chains that are being managed, but we've been implementing Splunk as a portfolio, and we're feeling like we got a good grasp. So next is, we have to identify where is the bottleneck in our value stream? Where are we slowing down? If you've read the Phoenix Project, raise your hand. Next year when I give this talk, everyone should raise your hand. Okay, new jokes next year. But Read the Phoenix Project. One of the things that they talk about in the Phoenix Project is the emphasis on only optimizing at the constraint, at the bottleneck. If you optimize before the bottleneck, what happens? Work builds up at the constraint. If you optimize after the constraint, what happens? Everybody's sitting around waiting, right? You want a consistent flow of work. So developer velocity has increased. There are bottlenecks still exist, but it's not clear where, right? Is it in testing? Is it in provisioning of environments? Is it in taking it to Black Duck and validating that any open source software is, is secure? Also, tool chain outages are happening, and that's slowing things down, right? Operating models are now being applied to those tool chains, which are new, because now they are new tier one services. So this is our scenario, all right? So we've got our infrastructure in place. We've got our automation tool chain for our infrastructure, right? We now have a centralized view of the value stream. Right? So what we need to do is bring in data from the tool chain. Bring in data from JIRA, from ServiceNow, from Jenkins. Bring in data from Slack and how we respond and the automated responses that we have. Right? Whether you're using Phantom or, or uh, one of the other automation platforms that I listed here. Right? Centralize that view of your value stream. Right? Apply developer tool modeling. Right? Start modeling the behavior of the tools that our developers using. And now with the bringing in SignalFX and Omniscient, we have a great deal more to offer in application performance monitoring, observability, and tracing. And so now you're able to give the entire organization, right, everybody that's involved and engaged with the delivery of value to customers, you're giving them the opportunity and the option to see what's happening in the environment. And everybody can now truly work together to identify where the bottlenecks are and what the shared backlog should be. Because in order to actually do DevOps, 
and to, to have the success that is promised out in the industry from our thought leaders and organizations, right, that have gone and done well, you have to be able to have this shared visibility, that shared understanding of what's happening, and that shared backlog. Splunk is by far the best platform in the market to allow an organization to get through all of these gates, to be able to stabilize the platforms and share that information with the relevant teams so they can respond to changes and issues. Be able to change the way that you operate so that you are more effective and you're dealing with data and knowledge in, in order to affect your decisions. You're gonna be able to learn how to operate the new tool chain by collecting information from those tools so that you can better support the developers who depend on those tools and the business and your customers who now depend on those tools being available and functioning properly, and be able to optimize the value stream, identify the constraints, where things are slowing down, be able to share that immediately with the business so they can understand how features may be delayed or any issues in deploying out new features and capabilities. If you want to learn more about the things that I've talked today, and you're an operations professional, I highly recommend that you visit us at newopsdays.org. On there, we have a lot of videos, and we are putting on live events across the country, and we'll be doing virtual events as well. And we talk about how to implement these technologies and bring them into your environment. And Splunk, in your environment, should play a big part in how you do this and how you accelerate your success towards DevOps. Okay? Thank you very much. I appreciate your time.